everything in life is a lesson. But it's our perception of these lessons that actually create your life. Failure, we have all done it. Simply sending the text to the wrong person, saying that silly thing in that all-important interview. But what about success? What does that mean to you? Is it as simple as waking up in the morning and making your bed? Or is it more about winning a competition? Or what about how much money you make? For the past 47 years, I've been involved in the dance industry in one way or another. I was born with a club foot, and my parents were told if they put me in ballet, it will turn out my foot naturally. And it did. But by the time I was nine years old, I knew dance was more than just a hobby for me. It became my passion. I loved to dance. Every year I would take a ballet exam, and my friends all told me that you get your results in the mail, and if you see a red corner, that meant you failed. So every year I would take my exam and I would rip open that envelope and hold that letter up and be so excited when I would see no red corner. In my pre-professional year, my last ballet exam before I became a dancer, I opened that letter and there staring in front of me was a red corner. It might as well as just said, you fail in bright red writing. What did I do when I got that? I did what any young artist would do. I told myself I was worthless. I created this whole image of myself as a failure and an embarrassment to everyone. 12 years I had trained, five, six, seven days a week, and I was gonna give it all up. The next day I went to school, and you know what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. I was the exact same me as I was the day before I went to, and to school the day before. And then I went to my ballet class that night. Six out of 10 kids had failed their exam, and my ballet teacher told me that she failed this exam when she was my age. But that's not what I told myself. I told myself I was the only one. This was super confusing to me because I, I was a failure. So. What, what was this? So I started writing. I wrote down everything. I wrote down my emotions, how people treated me, my expectations, and I wrote down success, any piece of paper without a red corner. <laughs> I realized two really important things. One, I was actually taking my ballet exam just not to fail rather than to pass. And two, my idea of what success and failure were, were totally wrong. Success feels amazing. It's exhilarating and it gives you a sense of pride. Failure, embarrassing and shameful. Well, that's what I told myself. That's what I was taught to believe. But I didn't understand how this worked. We make a lot of choices in life based on love or fear. I believe we make a lot of choices in life on if we're going to succeed or if we're going to fail. It's our perception of these things that actually create our events in our life. Perception is reality. You believe it's real, it's real. You think you're happy, you're happy. So it's our perception that was wrong. I started red cornering events in my life, putting things in healthy, true, honest perspective. There are so many people in life who've accomplished great things after failure. Oprah, Walt Disney, we've all heard of those. I remember the ballerina, Misty Copeland. She was only 13 years old when she started dancing. And she's African-American, which is, um, how many African-American ballerinas have you seen? Not many. She was so poor that her and her five brothers and sisters would fight for a space on a motel room floor when they had nowhere to live. Yet she, is the prima ballerina right now in 2015 and it still is today for the American Ballet Theater and she's the first African American to do it. And she is also one of the 100 most influential people of the world right now. People like Lady Gaga, she lost her record deal after only three months, her first, first record deal and yet she's a music icon of today. The developer of Instagram took 12 years to get to that to market but we don't hear about that. I make the rules. I get to decide what success and failure mean, and you do too. So stop letting other people do it, and you decide. You take control of that. When I did that, I changed. 
I started putting my love of adventure, creativity, and helping others ahead of failures or successes. I have got to teach my passion of dance for over 30 years, and I've even won Dance Teacher of the Year four times. And not only that, I'm an at-risk youth worker here in our communities, and I volunteer helping kids who can't find their place, addictions and all these things, they're finding their places because I get to do that through volunteering. How wonderful is that? An adventure? I have traveled the world following adventure. I have swam with sharks in South Africa. I have kayaked glaciers in Alaska. I even entered a cooking competition against real chefs, and I won. All because I put my love of learning and growing ahead of any success or failure or any fear of, of failure. I loved it. I watched as this grew and grew. I watched my students. I was teaching. But over and over, you know what? My students who failed the most were still succeeding the most. I remember reading this book called Art and Fear. In this book, it was a ceramics class. In this ceramics class, they broke the ceramics class into two groups. Group A was going to be marked on how many pots they could make. Group B was told they were going to be marked on one pot, the best pot they could make. Group A had to make 50 pots to get an A, 40 for a B, and so on. They went right to work making as many pots as they could. Group B took their time, slowly created this one beautiful pot to hand in to be graded just on the quality of that pot. The results surprised everyone. Every single person in Group A also had the better quality pots. Practice makes better pots. You could also say those who failed the most succeed the most. But I don't know. There are so many talks about success and failures all the time. I remember sitting my nine-year-old daughter down and talking to her about what success and failure meant. Failures? Oh, man, she could come up with failure after failure, no problem. But when it came to success, she had a hard time talking about what success meant to her. I was kind of sad about that. And then she told me something. She told me that a tiger symbolizes success to her. OK. She told me how they're powerful and strong, and how even if they're fighting for prey and they don't get it, they just move on and go to the next thing. Wow, I thought this was great. So I told her, let's talk about this at school. Get your favorite stuffed animal tiger, bring it down, and share this with people so it's not just about failures all the time. She said to me, Mom, I want to bring a real tiger to school. <laughs> of course. What else would a nine-year-old say? But within one week, she found an animal conservationist, someone who talks about endangered animals. And she had a 350-pound Siberian tiger at her elementary school for show and tell. <laughs> Success to a nine-year-old, bringing a tiger to school. She's an adult now, and I love that she uses a success story, something really positive in her life, to help her through hard times, and she has had hard times. She has had lows and failures, but she uses these success stories. I love that. It's time we reboot our minds. We red corner put things in honest, true perspectives so that we too can grow. I say reboot, not remove. Somehow to society today has decided that removing failures from our children's lives is what we need. No. As a dancer, I grew up going in dance competitions. Let's say there were 16 kids in a dance competition. Well, I would place somewhere between first and 16th place. Nowadays, gold, silver, or bronze. Every single child will get a medal. Wasn't enough. They removed the bronze medal, the silver medal. Every single one of my dancers who compete now will get a gold medal. That dancer who comes one hour a week whenever they feel like it, and that dancer who trains and gives up their birthday parties and everything are getting the same medal. This is confusing for our children, and it is not OK. But it's not just in dance. My friend's daughter was in a soccer tournament last weekend. She got a trophy before the tournament began. <laughs> she hadn't even stepped on the field. And she's 13. She's not a little baby. 13 years old. She hadn't even started. She'd already received a trophy. I have talked to teachers and educators. They're telling me they're not even allowed to red X or make mistakes on their students' works at school or put deadlines on assignments. This is not OK. It is setting up our children for failure. They are not seeing the real picture. 
they are not getting what success and even failures do to help us get to the next level, this is detrimental to our children nowadays. They're living in this in-between world. You know what? You're right. They're not getting those lows. They're not getting those highs. They are not understanding how to cope with things, but they are also not understanding how wonderful it is to succeed and work so hard for something that you actually get it. This in-between world is not okay. Rock bottom's a solid foundation to build ourselves up from sometimes. Doors are gonna open and close all the time. Why are we writing false Wikipedia pages in our heads and believing it to be true? When your goal is to gain experience and knowledge, your perspective changes. Failure is no longer possible. If you wanna call it failure, call it failure, then fail. Fail and fail again because that's how we evolve as humans. But do not stop the process. Did you know that Mental Health Commission of Canada says 63% of our youth, age 15 to 25, are at risk for mental health issues, 63%. They studied children who had a false sense of failure and uh, success as children. These children are having trouble coping as adults. They can't even make simple calls to a doctor's or a dentist's office for an appointment. They can't even open up bank accounts. These kids are young adults and they can't find their way. Not only that, they found these kids are so easily offended with everything we say. They've lived in this world here, and if it doesn't fit in there, they're offended. And they're becoming socially unaware of themselves, others, and the world around them. Some of these kids can't even leave their houses anymore. Their anxiety and depression is so high. I want you right now to think of a time in your life where you too had an unhealthy perspective, when it was actually just a step to get where you are today. Were you actually trying to even get to success, or were you, like me, just trying to avoid failure? Or was your anticipation of failure actually greater than the failure itself? What if I told you you actually never fail at all? You just don't meet your own expectations of what you believe the outcome is supposed to be. I'll say it again. When your goal is to gain experience and knowledge, your perspective changes and you can no longer fail. Thank you.